Hello, hi, and welcome to today's video in which I'm quickly going to explain what is a subnet address. And when you're playing around with IP addressing with networking, you can't find a way around subnet, uh, subnetting. So I'm going to roughly and quickly explain what that actually is because a lot of people, it's just confusing. Why is it there? I have an address. Why do I need a second one? Why do I need this stupid subnet address? So therefore, um, I have a TIA project open just to show somehow uh, in TIA portal, but the more general thing is in my um, application here that I'm building, uh, I'm gonna explain what the subnet actually is. <clears throat> when we are talking about networking and more precisely about ethernet networking, other networking and bus systems, they use different methods to achieve a similar thing, or they don't even have anything like subnetting depends on the networking system that you're using. Um, but in Ethernet, which is coming becoming more and more the standard for almost everything nowadays, um, you use networking and you use subnetting. So what I have built up here is some colorful walls, right? And these colorful walls, they each represent a subnet, right? We have this huge network. All of this, the, the blue thing, is basically everything combined, our huge network. Um, and then in our network, that's the term, we have subnets, right? We have the purple, red, yellow, green, and the blue overall is also one. We have those subnets, which are subnetworks of the same network. So if you have just like 10 components or so, you do not need subnets, theoretically. You still need to set them and stuff, but um, you theoretically don't need them. They exist because you could have hundreds and thousands of devices and you want some of them to communicate and some shouldn't. Like in this case, we have the purple ones, for example. Only the purple ones, they should communicate with each other. That could be inside one machine. This machine should not communicate to the yellow ones, for example. It, it's just not necessary. And for your security and safety reasons and also the amount of data that is being sent, you don't want these to communicate. So you put them in different subnets. They can still, uh, from the hardware side, be connected to each other. Subnetting, it has nothing to do with the hardware itself. It has to do with the software and the addressing you do in the device. Um, so let's have a look at what I actually did here. So um, if we're talking about IP addressing or networking, you see on top, we're talking about two components, two addresses which is the IP address itself. In my case here, the 192.168.x and y, hmm, why ever I have x and y. Um, that is the IP address, right? Or if I go to my TR portal here, I am in my device network view, and there I have the um, IP address. If I click on that little button here, there I have the IP address listed for all my components that have an IP address. And you see, my uh, profi bus or mpi here they also have addresses but they are completely different so the different bus systems different uh, addressing <clears throat> and you see um all of these addresses right here are different i could theoretically if i go here right, if i go here and i say hey ethernet address i can make this the same address as here on the left side, right? So those have the same ethernet address now, which is 192.168.0.101, which means they can't communicate. This is an error, you cannot do this. If I try to connect those now, right? You see, TIA portal will automatically tell me, hey, these are in, um, those have the same address. Do you want to change this? Yeah, I want to do it. I want to change it to the next free address in the subnet. If I hit okay, you see, this is still the 101. This is the 102. The 102 automatically got changed. So why is it 102? Why is it not 17435.7.3? Something like this, some random number. No, because they have to belong in the same subnet. And the subnet, if I go to Ethernet addresses, the subnet is always shown like this. You see, we have the subnet mask, right? 255, 255, 2550, whatever that means. And we have the IP address 192.168.0. This means in combination, those always go in the combination. So the subnet 255, 255, 255, those indicate that the first three parts here, the 192.168.0, those are uh, the so-called subnet address. 
those belong together. So all devices that want to communicate with each other have to be in the same subnet here. Of course, there's routing. I'll get to that in a second. So these two, they're connected here and here. So the first three parts have to be the same because that's what we set in the subnet. So 192.168.0 has to be the same for these two. If that would not be the same, like if this one would have the whatsoever, a seven here in this case, ah, I don't need a router. They are still physically connected. They're still physically connected, but they cannot communicate because we don't tell them, hey, communicate in other networks. So right now the communication wouldn't work because of this subnet. They're not in the same subnet anymore. Right? So I would need to fix this. I could basically take this one and also put it in the seven. No problem at all. So generally speaking, um, you have bigger and smaller subnets. If you see 255.255.00, that's already a quite big um, subnet um, because we have 255 times 255 maximum participants. So if it would be 255, 255, 255 and zero, that means the first three parts, like this one here, the first three parts of all components have to be exactly the same. They have to be 192.168.0 in this case. Of course, there could be anything else, but 192.168.0 in this case. And you see all these components that are in this green frame. Every single component here in the green frame has this as the beginning. So they all share the network, the subnet, the 192.168.0. What they do not share is, of course, the um, IP address itself, right? They have to be different. So we only have one variable left here, which is in the last place, the Y. So the 192.168.0 is for all the same and the Y has to be different for all of them. Has to be different. So here, what examples do we have? Some PLCs, this is one, two, this has a 10. Here we have the same address twice, 30. That is not possible. That is a conflict which will be registered in a network and those two can't communicate. There's of course different mechanisms that try to prevent this and not going into the details now. Um, what you can also not take is um, the, the minimum and maximum address. So the zero, I would recommend not to take. It's possible sometimes, but I would recommend not to take. And the 255, 255 is always the highest number for each of these entries here. So you can go here from zero to 255, zero to 255, zero to 255, zero to 255. 255 is always the highest address, which is reserved. So don't take the zero, don't take the 255. Um, and then as the last, if I put in 256, so this one should have the 256 in the last place, not possible, that is outside the range. So negative numbers also not possible. <clears throat> so that's a subnet. So in the end, if you want to network in, in your company, in your factory, all components should communicate with each other. Just put them in the same subnet. That's possible. Then you only have to care about this last spot. And you see, it becomes so easy because you just care about one number in the end. Um, of course, that's not the standard case. Usually you have different networks, different subnets in your factory. For example, one machine or one factory line uses a different subnet than another factory line. You want to split them up like this here. There's the yellow one, right? There's the yellow one and the green one. In between, they cannot communicate. Of course, with routing, they can, but standard-wise, they're not designed to communicate to each other. Um, so that one has the one in the third space. You see it on top, right there, right there. You see the one that has the zero, um, and they're both using the 255, 255, 255, zero um, as the subnet mask, um, which means we owe, for both of them, we have the last digit as the client address. It's called the client address or the participant address of the network, <clears throat> which means right here in the second network, in the yellow one, I can use the one and two again, which I already used here because they are now different subnets, right? They're separated from each other. <clears throat> um, yeah, <clears throat> if you want to, so that's, that's just a general thing, right? You can separate them. Why is it like this? You have safety mechanisms, you have different architectures, you have different machines, right? So of course you need to split it up all the way. Um, and it goes that far that in the factory, usually you have four, five, six, seven, ten different subnets. Um, for example, in an office, an office definitely needs, it doesn't need, but you usually have a different subnet than in your factory line. 
because if everyone in your office can access and is always accessing all the components in your factory line, uh, in your assembly line, that means something is going to mess up at some point. Someone is going to mess up. So you want to separate them using different subnet addresses. <clears throat> right? There's some more things that we can do with subnet addresses. Right? There's some more things. Um, for example, oh, let's get to this one here. So this one here in the end, this component, you see it, it has, if I look from the bottom, it has two connections. On the left side here, it has a connection for Ethernet. On the right side, it has a connection for Ethernet. That is pretty much the same as this component here, right? this PLC. This has one that goes in the 192.168.11, uh, in the network 196, uh, 192.168.1 in the network, and another one that goes here and the seven. Those two are different connectors. So this one can communicate here. If I plug this in, into this port here, like if I connect these, you see they cannot communicate. I need to change some addressing, right? Yeah, that's how it is. <clears throat> I won't change it right now, but that's how it is. Um, that's why this one has two. Uh, a lot of PLCs, a lot of components have that um, because sometimes you want those to communicate here in a network somehow. Oh, did I click on change? Oh, let's claim the well, change. Doesn't matter. Um, and then sometimes you have third, fourth component. For example, here you might have an HMI. Let's take an HMI uh, in here. Let's take this one. This one. my favorite HMI. This goes here. So this PLC uh, is the where is my HMI? Three, two, one. There it is. Everyone always puts in comments, hey, your PC is so fast. How can you make TR run so fast? Well, because everything is already prepared usually in my videos. <laughs> and my PC is strong, but still. Um, so, and now, if only this left PLC should access my HMI, what do I do? I just grab here from the left side, right? I just grab this. And now the HMI and the PLC, they can communicate within the network that has a three in the third position and the PLC and the PLC can communicate with the seven. This PLC cannot right now communicate with the HMI if this one does not forward the packages, right? So that's, that's a little confusing, but that's how it is. Um, so that's this component here, for example, it has on the right side, it's in this network, whatever that is on the left side, it is in this network. <clears throat> It could also have here the 40 and there also, no, they're not the 40 because that would be a conflict, but it could have the same theoretically in both. <clears throat> so the next and last um, special case is some components, right? This component here, for example, um, has this subnet address. It has the 255.255.0.0. That's the general thing. It has that, right? Um, you would think because it has the 255.255.0.0 as the subnet, it cannot communicate to the green one, which has 255.255.255.0, but that is not the case. Um, because I have put this one here. You see it? It has a 0 and a 3. So in the, uh, uh, instead of the X here, it has a 0, and instead of the Y, it has a 3. If we're looking at this, 192.168.0, that is this subnet. Right? So this component here is theoretically and practically as well in this subnet. It is using a different subnet mask, but it can still be in the same network because it has a correct address in that frame. Right? This one has a 10 in the, in the third place. That's not in here. This one has a 17. That's not in here. This one has a zero that fits. So this one also goes in here which makes this one here capable of communicating to the left side and to the right side. Of course, we're telling it, hey, the zero here doesn't really matter that much if you communicate to the left, so you can also communicate to 1017. The zero matters if you go to the right side because there it is important for these components. So everything is a little bit complicated, right, with subnetting. Um, I hope I cleared it up a little bit. That's just the general behavior of subnets. There is, of course, way more to it. When there's, for example, routing, there is um, uh, there is much to it. <laughs> if you want to know anything more about 
networking, about subnetting. Why do we need this? Um, I can make another video, just put it in the comments below because that topic is quite interesting, but very, very difficult, right? Very difficult. Um, yeah, if you've got any questions, do put them in the comments. If you have answers, everyone, here's the new deal. If you have answers to any of the comments that you read uh, below, to the questions that you read below, you can also answer them, right? <laughs> Please answer them because I can't. It's just too much. This channel has grown so much. So um, thanks for making the channel grow. But still, there's so much to it. Um, good. Then, of course, the last two things. As always, we have a forum. So you can put... I'll put the link to the forum in the description below. Um, so please feel free to go in there and answer and ask questions there. That'd be awesome. Link is in the description below. And, of course, the last. What is also awesome. If I'm just having a look at this. Awesome. I love you guys. Mwah. Um, there is a GoFundMe in the description below and I see, hey, Anonymous, 50 bucks. That's so much. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Uh, Veliko, uh, five bucks. Thank you very much. And Athanos, Athanasios, that's a cool name, but I can pronounce it. 10 bucks. Thank you very much. So if anyone wants to toss some money in my direction because I was very helpful, just do that. Links in the description below. Um, thank you very much. Um, uh, do not... <laughs> Almost forgot it. Do not forget to like. <laughs> Do not forget to subscribe and maybe ring the bell if you want to. That's not necessary. Um, but yeah, like and subscribe is necessary. <laughs> Thanks for watching and stay safe, stay healthy. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye. And there's way more to networking. That was just the basics of subnetting, right? Okay, good.